the Ashleys actually were a family who moved to uh, Palm Beach County in 1904. There was a father, um, Joe, and his wife, Virginia. They had five boys and four girls, and they moved to what is now, Palm, it was now Barton County, but it was northern Palm Beach County at the time. Through a misdeed of John, who was working as a trapper, they became the Ashley Gang. John was a young man in his early 20s. He was a trapper out in the Everglades. He was taking otter pelts into market in, in Miami with a Seminole Indian named uh, DeSoto Tiger. Well, John made, made it to market and DeSoto and sold the pelts and DeSoto Tiger did not make it to market. And a few days later, his body washed up in one of the canals they were digging and, um, for drainage in the Everglades. So John was uh, arrested for murder, and even though he said it was self-defense, he was tried numerous times. One of the times he was um, convicted and uh, sentenced to hang, but that conviction was overturned. He uh, escaped uh, from the jail uh, numerous times and was recaptured numerous times. And in the intern of being on the run, he became an outlaw. He, uh, got into moonshining, rum running, bank robbing, train robbing, and he eventually was caught with his gang and gunned down on the Sebastian in Inlet Bridge in Indian River County in 1924. It was just hard to make a living back then. So the Ashleys were, I don't know if you'd call them Robin Hood, but they were not afraid to hire they were, were into rum running and they were, I mean, into moonshining and they were, they had three or four different stills in the county and they were big. They weren't little, you know, five gallon things. They made a hundred gallons at a time and they employed people and they also employed the black community and the black community was loyal to them because of that. They also took care of people that if somebody came by and needed a meal, they got a meal, you know, and that kind of thing. So yeah, the family, they were a good respected family. Even when they were doing the rum running and the moonshining, they were still a well-respected family. And they owned businesses. They owned a, um, and the little town Fruita that they lived in, they owned a um, grocery store, a um, gas station, and a boarding house. So they weren't just these lawless backwoods guys. They were upstanding uh, citizens, business people in the community. Up until this time, the story was basically they were these horrible bank robbers and murderers. And if you really look at the story, um, John never went out to murder anybody. In fact, he let a lot of people go. He, he would, if, the, if he caught the sheriff's deputies trying to track him, he would outsmart them and he would take their guns and send them home. He, didn't, he had an opportunity to kill lots of people and he didn't do that. Um, so that's, you know, they, that's one thing good about them is they weren't. They weren't bloodless, you know, ruthless bank robbers and, and murderers that they were made out to be until you stop and look into the story a little more. Once they were considered a, a gang, every murder, every bank robbery, every um, trade robbery in the state of Florida was blamed on them. Whether they were even in jail or, you know, in the state or not, it was blamed on them. So they were sensationalized even back then. Um, and made to look a whole lot worse than they really were. John had a girlfriend, her name was Laura Up the Grove. She was a, um, a local, she grew up in Okeechobee. And you think uh, Stewart and Martin County was the Wild West? Well, Okeechobee was even wilder. So she married at 13 or 14 for the first time. She had had two husbands and four kids by the time she met John. And she never married John, but John was the love of her life, and she got into the gang, operation of the gang, and the, she was smart, and she was a businesswoman, and she was also a rum runner. She had a boat, her own boat, that went to the Bahamas and back, and um, so when she hooked up with John, that was like a match made in heaven for the two of them, and, and uh, they were eventually, since they were robbing banks and hanging out in the Everglades, they eventually became known as the king and queen of the Everglades. When John was murdered on the Sebastian Bridge, Laura was left alone and she, she didn't do well after that. She ended up, um, she kept selling liquor, but she, she was over in Canal Point uh, working at a, a gas station slash grocery store for her mother. Canal Point's on Lake Okeechobee. 
and uh, she got into an argument with her um, uh, a man that she had sold some liquor to. She, he said that she didn't give her give him the right change, and in a fit of rage, she took a bottle of Lysol and drank it, and she died. And um, she was only 30 years old, so she lived led a, a hard life and an exciting life for her and did whatever she wanted, but she, she led a short life. So the exhibit basically tells you the whole story. Um, it doesn't try to glorify either way. It tries to give you facts. Um, we do have a replica moonshine still. We have a replica uh, tent to represent the, um, the camps that they had. We have um, over 400 artifacts that belong to, to John Ashley and the family. One of the most, we do have guns, we have clothing, uh, we have artifacts from the home site, homestead site, which is, was down in Fruta, which is um, just north of Hope Sound, south of Stewart. The most, most interesting artifact that everybody wants to see is when John did a bank robbery in Stewart as they were leaving town in the getaway car. Uh, one of the, the outlaws with him accidentally discharges his gun or he was celebrating and discharged his gun. And the shot went through John's jaw and lodged in his eye and he lost the, um, his, uh, the sight in his right eye. So eventually he was fit with a glass eye and we have that glass eye on display. The story continues, so that's why it's a legend.